good day, everyone. How are you guys? Nice weekends were had, and that's going smoothly. Uh, got a couple things to go over today. Any random questions before we get started? Today is Monday, the 15th, and the Chapter 7 homework quiz are here tonight. So please be working on that. I want to spend at least a little bit of time looking at Chapter 7. Sorry, no. Yeah, looking at Chapter 7 homework stuff with you guys today. Um, please send me questions while you're working on that. We'll open the floor up to any questions you guys have about that assignment in a minute. Uh, this week, 15th through the 19th, is I guess the last full normal week for this particular course. Uh, we'll have lecture all, the, all three days and we'll have lab as usual. Excuse me, pardon me. We'll have lab as usual this week. Next week though is Thanksgiving. So I will only see you for lecture on Monday the 22nd. Uh, after that point, <coughs> enjoy the holiday. Um, I'm currently planning chapter eight homework to be due this day at the earliest. Um, I'll keep you posted about that. I might push it back just to give you more time on it. Um, the week after Thanksgiving is the last full week that the school will have in the semester. And there won't be a lab that week because I am planning a test two for that week, just to make sure that it's actually a test average for everybody. And I'm still exactly, I'm still figuring out a few of the details on how I'm going to administer that one because I want, uh, uh, it will be that week, there will be a test too, it will be that week. It will be shorter than the previous one, bless you. Uh, shorter than the previous one because it will only be about three chapters instead of about five chapters. Test one was chapters one through five, uh, test two will be chapters six through eight. So it will just be momentum, collisions, and rotational stuff. So that, will all, that is all that will be on chapter, test two. I want to make sure everyone has plenty of time for studying and for to actually take a thing. So I'm still working on how I'm going to administer it to make sure that it is both fair and quick and something that I can read quickly to get back to you guys. So exact format will be announced soon. I apologize. <coughs> I'm still working on it. Uh, but that's when it will be, and I'll make sure that more practice questions are up as well as a list of all the concepts that will be on it. The week after that, uh, I will only, we'll only meet for class on the 6th. We'll spend that day reviewing, closing things out. I like to make fudge when it's about to be the start of winter break. So hope that, I hope it'll be a nice day. And then exam season begins. Now, I get asked this particular question a lot, so I've gone ahead and written said information on the board. Because I keep forgetting, and I'm going to have to keep looking it up unless I write it down. These are the three exam slots for Physics 1500. They are Thursday the 9th at 5.30 p.m., Friday the 10th at 1.30 p.m., and then additionally there's one at 5.30 p.m. also on Friday. Now, this is e-lecture, so officially, your official time is 1.30 on Friday. However, I give the same exam all three times. So I don't really care which one you come to. If you have a preference, I would like to speak with you about it if you do have a preference and want to swap though, so send me an email about it. But if for some reason one of them works far better for you than the others, do let me know. Um, that said, if the one you prefer is Friday at 5.30 because it gives you more time to study, there is also merit to getting it done and over quickly. So just keep that in mind. But if you do have a conflict, if there's some reason you want a different one, just let me know. I don't really mind. That's when they are. And again, I'll make sure to have plenty of practice questions uploaded for you guys to work on and study for that. And we'll spend all of Monday and the later half of the last full week making sure we're ready for it. Um, 
We're all, we'll open the floor up for homework questions in a second. Before that, though, any questions about the calendar stuff we just, that just been discussed. Okay. Uh, as I encourage you to send me homework and quiz questions, do please send me scheduling questions at any time as well. The Chapter 7 assignments are due tonight, so I would like to take a look at any issues you guys are having with that. There's a couple, there's one or two things I want to additionally point out as well before we get started. As a reminder, number eight, I have eliminated part B and part C. Um, they will still be visible, but they are worth zero points. You don't have to do them. You don't have to submit anything for them. You can leave them completely blank and there will be no penalty for it. If for some reason your assignment isn't updated with that correct point total, for some reason mine still shows the wrong one, but yours should show the correct one. If there's still an issue, please let me know. But 8B and 8C have been redacted. Additionally, um, I've gotten some questions about this one. So we can talk more about it if you want to. But for number five, there's some constants that I want to go ahead and make sure you guys have. Because uh, the information exists, it's just not specific <coughs> on this sign question. Number five is asking about the orbit of a satellite around the Earth. And some people, when first reading this question, have expressed some concern that one, we aren't told a speed for this satellite, we are only told the time in which it orbits, and that we are also concerned, some people have been concerned, that there's no mass <coughs> listed for the satellite. <coughs> Bless you, twice. Um, additionally, the question doesn't list the mass of Earth or the radius of Earth, which are both variables that you need to work the question. So I, one, wants to make sure you have those two needed constants. I have here the mass of Earth in kilograms and the radius of Earth in meters. Those will both be relevant. I encourage you to go ahead and copy them down so that you don't have to look them up later. These numbers are in the chapter seven notes though. So if you don't write them down now, they are on the note, the PowerPoint that is uploaded to the Brightspace page. Uh, some further pieces of information about the number five setup. You were told a time, a number of minutes for one revolution of this satellite around the Earth. Minutes per revolution, which is functionally what you have, it says minutes, but that is the minutes per revolution. Minutes per revolution can be converted into seconds per radian. Minutes convert to seconds, revolutions to radians. Once your answer is in this form, that's the inverse of the angular velocity. Angular velocity is normally radians per second. If you convert to seconds per radian, you can simply invert that number to find angular velocity, which you can then use in our gravitational force equals its centripetal force setup. Uh, and it's additionally worth noting that you weren't told a mass for the satellite because you don't need one. The satellite mass is present in the numerator on both sides of this equation, so it just cancels out. Keep that in mind, it may be a test question like that. What this means is any object orbiting Earth at whatever height this satellite is would have to move at the same speed at that height regardless of whatever its mass is. The last detail I want to preliminarily point out about this question, because it's one that I foresee causing a few issues in getting your answer. Uh, I recommend this as your starting point. I recommend working this through to find radius, because you are being asked for the altitude of the satellite from Earth's surface. However, this radius isn't the altitude. <coughs> This radius is the distance from the satellite to the center of the Earth. Because the center of the Earth is both the center of the satellite's orbit 
and it's also the central focus point, the source of Earth's gravity, which is acting as a centrifugal force. So solving this for radius will tell you the distance from the satellite to Earth's core, not its altitude. To find altitude, you're going to want to subtract out Earth's radius. So that's one reason why I want to make sure you have that number now. Uh, when we did the moon question the other day, that was less of an issue because the moon is actually really far away from the Earth, and the Earth's radius is a really small chunk of that distance. But for a satellite, which tend to orbit here-ish, it's more of a problem and you have to factor it out. So, a couple things I want to go ahead and point out about number five because I foresee them causing a lot of emails. I've cut off a few of those in the past. How's that one feel? Nodding, nodding is good. If for some reason you aren't mentally nodding, I do want you to let me know. questions about other parts of this assignment. Can you do number eight? Eight. Ah. Yes, we can. As a reminder, B and C don't exist. We're only doing part A. B and C are worth zero points. You don't even have to attempt them. For part A, though, uh, I'm running out of board space. My apologies. Part A is a centripetal force question to kind of demonstrate what's happening here. I don't want to do it with my spring because those tend to be a little uncontrollable. So instead, please be right here. For a second, I thought I left my laptop table at home, which is an hour away. That would have been bad. All right, so to kind of replicate what's going on in this problem, this is, there is a centripetal force involved in making this motion happen. Um, now, if we consider the actual end of the cable to be the object and the rest of the cable to be the string, <coughs> note that the center of the orbit is not where the string connects. Because if you consider the orbit to be this flat disk plane down here, the center is just the center of this circle. It's not up here, it's down here. So the centripetal force does point from the object to the center of this flat circular plane. So this entire question come down to a, to a certain amount of trigonometry. So, we have our object, it is hanging in this boat, it is currently spinning. 